What's going on, people? Now, welcome to Members Only. For a couple of weeks, we've been jumping from New York to D.C., so we're going to give that a little break and take it way to the West Coast now. Shout out to the West Coast. Man, we talking about Oakland, so Oakland, stand up. Shout out to everyone from Oakland. Shout out to everyone from Cali. You know, the whole, you know, the whole situation. Now, today's topic is about the power shift between Daryl Reed and Felix Mitchell. Two different organizations, yes, but the two were close, so I wanted to compare both men and, you know, how both men controlled their organization, their own organization, and, you know, both coming from the same city, around the same people, being around the same projects. You know, the two weren't related, but Little D looked at him as an uncle. He would call him Unc. Now, Felix Mitchell... He was getting money since he was 11 or 12 years old. He was in the streets, so he hopped off the porch pretty early. He was getting money any way he can. A lot of people don't know that he was pimping for a short amount of time. His early pimping days will be a benefit as he transferred into the dope game, so he would use females as a help for his enterprise. He was able to cop a 1967 Cadillac Coupe de Ville at the age 17 or 18. So, you know, he was getting to, he was getting to the dollar. He already, you know, had everything established. He had that old school Oakland game, like that game that you hear at E-40, that game that you hear, you know, too short, you know, that player talk. So that's the type of game he had. But, you know, players F up too from time to time, right? He had, you know, some screw ups indeed, but, you know, hey, that happens when you're young. You live and you learn. He was selling H outside of his bedroom window at his mother's place, which is a no-no. So, you know, just imagine the millions of things that could go wrong with that. He put himself and his mother in a dangerous position. And then he ends up selling to an informant that led law enforcement right back to his mother's house that led to his first arrest. Now, with Lil D growing up around Felix Mitchell, he really looked up to him. He would see the Rolls Royces, the Ferraris, and all that type of stuff. You know, Felix would take Lil D and his cousin into the feline shop and tell the clerk get anything they want. So he saw the money, he saw the woman, he saw how the men respected Felix. So as a kid, people were not looking at the teacher like that. As a kid, people were not looking at the postman, they're not looking at the mechanic, they're not looking at the average nine to five with the most respect, you know? So he wanted to be the guy that like everyone respect. Like when you walk in a room, people just turn heads. So with the right, the nine to five, you really couldn't get that. And he wasn't, he wasn't trying to go the nine to five route. He wanted to be just like Unc. During the time, Felix was a big name out in the 6ix9ine village. Now, Daryl Reed took a close look at what was going on around him. He took notes and he watched how Felix ran his organization, down to the dealers, how they conduct business, how they treated customers. He was a student of the game before he even knew it. Now, when he got in the game, Felix Mitchell showed him the ropes. Lil D's ability to pay attention to detail and his gift of his grade A listening skills. He showed the city what he could do. Now, some people will say, well, anybody could be successful with the formula that Mitchell gave him, but that's not true. For example, say if you put someone like myself in the same boat, I may not have half of the success Lil D had. What could separate our results is the ability to listen. How we take in information separates the A plus students from the B plus students. The A plus students understand the course from different angles, no matter what's thrown at them. The C plus students understand it, but if you switch words around or word it differently, or even if they get hit with a speed bump, that could knock them off their square. By reading the comments, I can spot the difference between a good listener and a bad listener. For example, in a video about a meeting between Fritz and Alpo, I clearly stated in the video that I got the information from a book written about Fritz. After watching six minutes of the video, I get a comment saying, where you hear this info about a meeting? Now, that's a bad listener right there. <laughs> Someone else will drop a comment stating, I'm going to need a link or title to that book you mentioned at the end. Now, that's a great listener. Not only that, but he had common sense to go do the research himself before even challenging me. But anyway, D was a great listener. You could tell he was a smart kid. He saw that community was very important as he saw how Felix hired the mothers that lived in the projects to cook daily and made sure the workers had food to eat. Everyone was unemployed, but was still grinding. Felix made sure he helped with money, furniture, microwaves, all types of stuff, down to the kids getting work to serve as lookouts. 
Little D would take his game to a level that most of his big homies couldn't. He even was smart enough to stay in school even when he had millions of dollars. When Lil D became the man, a lot of the men that was in the game before him thought the only reason he was in position was because of Felix. Which wasn't true, Lil D grinded out and put in the work himself, unlike some of the guys under Felix that, you know, just wouldn't leave the nest, that just sat around and stayed in their comfort zone. Lil D was always looked at as the youngin, so he was always looked at as the little homie, as they would say in the West Coast. So certain men felt some type of way taking orders from Lil D. Lil D ran things a little different from the way that Felix did. Both men had two different products. Felix got rich off of dope. Lil D got rich off of crack. Even though Felix sold weed and coke, but the dope was his main source of income. But when crack hit, things were a little bit more faster. Everything was fast paced, even the customers. You know how crackheads move, way more energetic than a sluggish dope fiend. Lil D provided more of a customer friendly business. He was used to seeing the guys before him treat customers bad. And um, he made a rule to handle all customers but care, which makes sense. Only the smart ones would know. Now, customers could tell you all about what's going on in the streets. If you take time to bust it up with the smokers, you can know what's going on, who's moving in, all the competition. You can use the smokers as lookouts. You can use smokers to your advantage. <laughs> but um, what's the point of being a part of the game if you ain't playing to win, right? Now, Felix ran the 69th bill with an iron fist. Fiends weren't allowed to cop anything whenever Felix decided to shut down shop for whatever reason. When he did that, no one was allowed to sell anything. If you wanted your shot, you had to go down 65th. Whoever was caught dealing anything during closing hours would be dealt with. That's how much control he enforced on the neighborhood. Now, that could be a big inconvenience to the fiends and the workers. And that's nothing compared to what I'm about to say about Felix. Felix was so controlling that he would hold on to the money of certain people in his crew, acting as some type of bank, telling them that they could have their money anytime they want. He would give them tab bits of their own money for monthly bills and, you know, things that they need, like for utilities and all that type of stuff. Mind you, his operation ran even on the most hot and rainy days. And these were the men that were working under these conditions. Now, what he was doing wasn't securing no one but himself. Guys were dying with their money in his hands. And it's not like the money was going to their families. Now, I know all these guys' secrets, man. I could tell you all the dirty stuff these guys were doing. I could tell you who these guys really are. Now, I am going to get to the dark side. I'm going to get into the dark side of Phyllis Mitchell soon in a video in a couple days. And it's not going to be for the public. I refuse to let stupidity ruin a good moment. So that's going to be for my upper echelon members. Now, you think what I'm saying is bad in this video. <laughs> Yo, that video, you're going to need a drink or you're going to need something to roll up, man. I promise you. But anyway, Little D said he wasn't a part of 6ix9ine Mob. He was only associate. <laughs> Now, try proving that in court under the RICO Act, because being an associate wouldn't make you any better or less guilty. But when Felix went to jail, the battle for territory sparked, and for somehow, Lil D seemed to acquire lots of territory, not to be a part of the mob. In the 80s and 90s, if you lived in the neighborhood or was a part of any neighborhood in any way, that was just his set. His protection was the 6 time mob, as in... If he got into any conflicts nine times out of ten, that was where his manpower would come from. Now, if he was caught lacking in any sort of way by any of the 6 9 Mafia rivals, would that associate speech work on them? If you ask me, that doesn't sound very convincing. <laughs> but Felix Mitchell was no stranger to war. I heard people say he was hands down most feared in his heyday. And being feared could sometimes hurt you. With him being feared, that was a part of his downfall and caused his death. Since a youngin, he was always known to take no shit from anyone. He was arrested for pumping bullets into a friend's house after an altercation with a friend and his wife. He walked off calmly after not caring about the witnesses that was around. And he once shot a dope fiend for running off with the product without paying them in broad daylight. Now, part of Lil D's success was that he understood the meaning of business and was willing to share the market, unlike Felix trying to corner the market 
trying to completely shut out all the dealers in the West Oakland area, keeping them out of the loop to force all the customers to go to East Oakland to purchase from him. He even bumped heads with some of the men that he started out with, telling them that they wasn't allowed to sell anything to his old friends. Now, all of the acquiring dope had to be done through Felix only. None of the other mob members were allowed to deal directly with the source. Lil D did business with different parts of the city that the big homies didn't agree on. Some look at it as he was playing both sides. Most of them looked at it as disrespect. Like, how could you become allies if blood was shed? A lot of soldiers have fallen. But that's how Lil D was able to expand. There was money to be made. Felix sent for Lil D to come visit him in prison. He let him know about the complaints he's been receiving about his dealings with enemies. He had questions himself also. Now Lil D knew that the less enemies, the less violence. The less violence, the less heat. The less heat equals more money. See, guys seem to forget about staying under the radar. But Felix had no choice but to respect it. His run was over and the game was shifting into a different direction. While Lil D made friends and did business with the other side, Felix did the complete opposite. He would set up shop and he didn't care about making friends. He would send his guys out Sacramento blind, not knowing who was who or the type of customers that they was dealing with, causing his men to get snitched on. With the 6ix9ine mob being feared, it kind of made it a little easy for Lil D. The reputation carried over, and the way the product was moving at such a good pace, Felix invented the trap drive through the cop and go environment where customers that wasn't even from the hood didn't even have to get out their cars. It was genius. Now, Lil D would keep that motion going. Another one was the water hose method. They would drop a balloon with work down a hose from a three-story apartment down to the workers to serve the customers. Now, the reputation that Felix had pretty much caused a petty death. Now, with his notorious reputation, they didn't know how he would react to certain situations. They knew how he got down. So to be safe, they decided to get him out of here. They decided to strike first. Now, towards the end, he didn't really have the same loyal men around him that he built with for the reason on how he treated his men. But just like I said, we're gonna get more in depth in the other video. Felix wasn't even locked up for that long before his life was taken. I think it was like a little bit over a year or it could have been a little less. So we don't know how it would have played out, especially with him seeing Lil D at the top. I mean, Felix did have some tendencies that make you question a whole lot. Little D did a stretch like a man and he received lots of love from guys paying visits such as E-40 and Too Short. With Lil D being solid as he was from day one, and he put so many men in position, when he came home, he had checks waiting for him. To this day, he don't want for anything due to his good friends doing well in life. But thanks for tuning in tonight. That's all we got. Don't forget to check out the playlist. Shout out to my day ones and shout out to my new viewers. Turn my notifications on. Hit the comments. Hit the like button. Someone said in my last video that I was begging for likes. Like, when does promoting yourself become begging? <laughs> but, you know, y'all all have a good one. Thanks for watching. Y'all be safe. I'm out.